This is going to be on a very, very exciting, expensive folder. Hello, everybody. Manix here. Got a quick little knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe. Hit the little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife gun gear videos of all sorts. And feel free to support me on Patreon. Link in the description. The Cold Steel Kudu. And if you believe me when I said it was expensive, ha, huh, I tricked you. This is actually one of the cheapest knives I own, one of the cheapest knives you can get out there on the market currently. Yes, that's right, cheap, even in 2023, I know. This is not a go-to EDC knife. It's not a tactical blade by any means. Tactical, does anyone even use that word anymore? Are they using it still? Do kids still say that? Who cares? This is an extremely lightweight, long-edged folder. It's slow to deploy, and it has no pocket clip. It's extremely affordable, and we have a very long cutting edge to accommodate how lightweight it is. So functionally speaking, those are the advantages this knife has. It's designed after the African ring lock knives, or the Okapi knives, a traditional wooden knife. It has a similar shape to this. It also has the same unique locking mechanism, the clasp lock, some people call it. Some people just call it the ring lock. I'll explain how that works in just a minute. Get the specs out of the way real quick. Weighs 2.4 ounces according to Hold Steel's official website. Two millimeter thick blade. And then we're gonna switch on over to the customary system for the length of it. It's 4.25 inches long. Very long blade there. 5CR15 MOV blade seal. The handle length is 5.75 inches. It is pure Zyx, other than this metal emblem, probably aluminum. Doesn't really matter. We have this steel clasp block right here. So our overall length clocks in at 10 inches on the nose. Now, if you read the title, the specific model number of this one is the CS20KK. The one before this one, I believe, was the CS20K, or just the 20K. The difference is that the previous model, if I remember correctly, had a Krupp stainless 4116. This, we have what I would consider to be an upgrade by CR15 MOV. And like all cold seals, it comes razor sharp at the box. Very, very sharp. Will perform well. I'm going to say, again, it's an upgrade from any kind of those Krupp stainlesses. And there's a wee wall right there. Had this for maybe, I don't know, two years. Let's see from the wear right there. I like that finish on there, too. It almost looks like a stone wash. It's not stone wash. It's, it's a mirror polish, but it looks almost like it's tumbled. I like it. Very, very nice. Very simple, classic clip style blade right here. Not a whole lot of belly, but again, it's a very long cutting edge. So directly comparing the blade steel 5CR15 MOV to the more commonly used 8CR13 MOV, at least by Spyderco and a handful of other companies, this guy has a bit more chromium content and a bit less carbon content. It also has significantly less vanadium, about double the molybdenum, about half to a third of the manganese, and then also does not have nickel phosphorus, sulfur, or silicon, which the 8CR13 MOV has. Basically, it just doesn't perform as well. Maybe the only advantage is it won't rust as much, because we have, naturally, we just add more chromium to it, as well as remove carbon, you're going to make the knife more rust-resistant. That's an advantage it has, and they do advertise the knife for being quite rust-resistant, but it's a pretty damn soft blade seal, which means resharpening it, at least, will be very, very easy. You'll be able to get its edge nice and sharp very quickly, even after using it for a long time. It just won't retain it very well. But for its price point, which I did not mention yet, 12 99 is what this retails at. You can get this for about 10 bucks, sometimes $9 or so on websites across the board. You really can't go wrong for 10 bucks. We have a decent blade steel, especially good for the money. Again, very, very lightweight. Let's weigh it ourselves. 4.25 inch blade. My scale is saying 2.74 ounces. It's still a sub three ounce knife. So still very lightweight, although not quite as impressive as cold steel said it was, according to my scale. We have a lot of handle here, very long, a lot of reach. If you had this open in your hand, yeah, you can make it a tactical or defensive blade, I suppose, but opening it is just too damn slow. You pretty much need two hands to deploy this knife and there's no pocket clip so even if you had this kind of in a nice neat spot that was predictable in your pocket there's still no guarantee you're going to lift it correctly i mean maybe you had the ring sticking out of there you could figure out a way to deploy it but there's just better knives for defense i would steer clear of this one as a defensive knife it's just too slow if you practice with it a lot and i'm sure there's various techniques and methods you could use to deploy this quickly with one hand but it's just not meant to do that there's no thumb stuff there's a nail neck that's kind of just how it's meant to be used it's kind of just a modernized version of the okapi kind of like cold steel's tie light is sort of like a modernized version of the italian stiletto folder like the sort of wood grain pattern they have in the zyx handle right here FRN, whatever you want to call that. Kudu horn emblem right here. Very beautiful. Nice touch. Now, the way our locking mechanism works is quite simple. It's just one piece of metal.
metal right here where that's pinned. So it's kind of like a lockback, even more simple and more crude. But when the blade moves out of the locked open position, the locking mechanism drops on the cutouts, the series of notches we have in the tang of the blade in there. That's what you're hearing, you're hearing that ratchet effect. This cutout right here locks into the final notch. So the pressure is all down here on the Zyax handle, and we literally just have to lift it to free the blade from the lock right here, and then we simultaneously push down on the spine to drop it back down into the closed position. The lock bar up here, the clasp lock, is what helps retain the blade in place. Familiar with half stops and lockbacks? That's kind of going back a ways. I haven't seen many of those these days, but it's kind of like having a whole bunch of half stops. So we got that very distinct click, 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 snap. Very nice, music to my ears. But again, it's crude. Um, Little bit of up and down here. It's actually not too bad, but it's, it's certainly not a rock solid lockup. Eh, not much side to side either. We have pivot screws in here, so it is adjustable at least we can adjust the side to side pivot. Again, the original copies are pin construction. Very cheap, kind of flattened split ring I throw in here. You can replace this with pretty much anything you wanted, though. I know earlier in the review I even mentioned how it's not a good EDC knife. Eh, you know, you could certainly carry this and use this if you didn't have any need for a knife or didn't care to have a defensive blade on you. You just wanted a tool and nothing more. You don't care about having to get to it quickly. You don't care about making sure it's 100% in that same familiar spot all the time. You don't care about having to be able to open it with one hand. Yeah, if you don't care about those three things, it's actually not that bad of an option. It's dirt cheap and it's hella light. Featherweight light for such a damn long cutting edge. Again, 4.25 inch blade, less than three ounces. Pretty impressive, actually, because it's it's so simple. It's kind of a crude slap together design, but it's really cheap and just kind of reflects that. You can buy many of these things and throw them around, stash them into various places. They're very functional, good folding knives. If you just need something for very light duty carry and you want that extra edge and you don't want it to be bogging you down too much. But it makes a great backpacking blade. I think if you're going on a hike, going camping, just throw it in there somewhere. It's very lightweight. You're getting a lot of useful cutting edge out of it. Just keep it nice and sharp. Anyway, that is that. Thank you so much for watching. Manix out.